Hello everyone, now we will begin with a topic called as pernicious anemia. Definition of pernicious anemia. Pernicious anemia is a chronic disease which is resulting from the deficiency of intrinsic factor which causes impaired absorption of vitamin B12 and eventually it results in megaloblastic anemia. So in this pernicious anemia there is deficiency of a factor called as intrinsic factor and this intrinsic factor is required for the absorption of vitamin B12. So since vitamin B12 also won't be absorbed it also results in megaloblastic anemia and intrinsic factors are secreted by the parietal cells of the stomach and this is most commonly seen in old age that is 5th to 8 decades of life that is 50 to 80 years of the life. Uh, of those individuals, in those individuals we can make out this pernicious anemia and most commonly affected sex is the females. Pathogenesis, it is one of the autoimmune disease also which develops due to the destruction of gastric mucosa. So gastric mucosa since it is affected, the parietal cells are also affected so that they won't be able to release in enough intrinsic factors. So nowadays, some evidences for this autoimmune causes there is association with other autoimmune diseases. So pernicious anemia appears along with other autoimmune diseases like Graves disease, Hashimoto's thyroiditis where these two are the thyroid disorders, adrenalitis where this is the inflammation of the adrenal gland. There is microscope with respect to microscopic examination of the stomach. This also shows there is damage to the gastric parietal cells due to both cellular and humoral response. That is direct cell damage as well as humoral response means by producing antibodies. Uh, and also there is response to steroids in this uh, state and there is presence of autoantibodies. The autoantibodies are produced in this uh, pernicious anemia called as anti-intrinsic factor antibody as well as uh, parietal cell antibodies, very important antibodies. Against the intrinsic factor also antibodies are produced and against the cell, that is the parietal cell which produces the intrinsic factor, against the cell also antibodies will be produced. Anti-intrinsic factor, factor antibodies are of two types, type 1 and 2. Type 1 is known as blocking antibody. So this particular antibody blocks the binding of vitamin B12 to intrinsic factor. Vitamin B12 to intrinsic factor. So this uh, prevents the binding of vitamin B12 to the intrinsic factor and this is seen in 50 to 75 percent of the cases detected both in the plasma as well as in the gastric juice. Whereas the type 2 uh, anti-intrinsic factor antibody is also known as a binding antibody where it promotes the binding of intrinsic factor to vitamin B12. This attachment is done but this complex attachment to the ileum will be prevented because ileum is the uh, part of the small intestine where the absorption of the vitamin B12 will take place to the ileum. The, this complex that is vitamin B12 intrinsic factor complex won't be attached by this particular antibody that is type 2 or binding antibody. This is seen in 40% of the cases. And the second type of antibody is known as parietal cell antibody that is the against the parietal cell this antibodies are produced and they are directed against the ATPase pump in the parietal cells. This ATPase pump is present in almost all the cell membrane. Against this pump uh, the uh, this antibodies are directed and this is seen in 90% of the patients. Pathogenesis we can put forward in this flow chart also it is one of the autoimmune disorder so therefore the CD4 cells that is the helper T cells they get activated they cause damage to the gastric mucosa and this results in autoimmune gastric atrophy that means the gastric uh, tissues also get, uh, will be reduced therefore uh, the uh, parietal cells also won't be sufficiently, uh, sufficiently present to produce the intrinsic factors. Therefore, there will be decreased secretion of intrinsic factor and there will be production of these two antibodies that is type 1 antibody that is the blocking antibody prevents the binding of vitamin B12 to intrinsic factor. Type 2 is the 
binding antibody which blocks the binding of vitamin B12 intrinsic factor complex to the ideal mucosa. Therefore, it results in pernicious anemia. Clinical features of pernicious anemia, the onset of this disease is insidious that means gradual, gradually it appears and the progress is slow. There is a triad feature that means uh, three clinical features can be seen together that is weakness, sore throat and paresthesia. Paresthesia means tingling sensation or pricking sensation will be seen. Sore throat means uh, irritation in the throat. Glossitis that is inflammation of the tongue or beefy tongue will be seen. Peripheral neuropathy will be there because of this numbness and paresthesia also will be seen. Ataxia means there will be imbalance and atherosclerosis means there is deposition of the lipids in the walls of the arteries. Laboratory findings of this pernicious anemia uh, will be having the blood findings, bone marrow findings, biochemical parameters, specific diagnostic test and other non-specific test. Blood findings and bone marrow findings uh, remain same as that of the megaloblastic anemia. So peripheral blood findings, hemoglobin shows reduced, PCV reduced, all the three indices uh, remains elevated, uh, total count remains normal or decreased and platelets also remains normal or decreased. Peripheral smear findings in the smear with respect to RBCs, we can see an isocytosis, poikilocytosis, variation in size of the cell uh, and variation in shape of the cell. Macroovalocytes, presence of both macrocytes as well as ovalocytes we can look out. Polychromatia, that is polychromatic cell, more than one color will be present in the red cells. Nucleated RBCs, that is NRBCs will be seen. Basophilic stippling. Those are the blue colored uh, particles or structures within the RBCs uh, within the RBCs will be present and these are usually uh, made up of RRNA. Next one is Howell Jolly bodies where these are also one of the inclusion of the RBCs where this also shows a blue color structure but this will be present towards the periphery of the cell and this is mainly made up of DNA. WBC count it will be decreased and it shows hyper segmented neutrophils that is shift to right more than uh, four, uh, 4 lobes will be present, 6 to 10 lobes will be present. Reticulocyte count uh, remains normal or mildly increased and platelets appears to be reduced. Bone marrow findings, cellularity will be hypercellular, so myeloid erythroid ratio shows increase in erythroid uh, series of cells to be in excess, so it is erythroid hyperplasia. Megaloblastic erythropoiesis with the presence of megaloblast will be present, that is there will be asynchrony of the nuclear and cytoplasmic maturation. There will be a absence of nuclear as well as cytoplasmic maturation, so there will be no proper DNA synthesis also. Megaloblasts will appear where they will be, they will be larger than the normal uh, normal blast, and they will be open uh, chromatin. That is uh, deficiency of the nucleosomes. Some areas of the nucleosomes will be absent. Myelopoiesis also shows large myeloid uh, cells with the variation um, in its nucleus. Megakaryopoiesis also shows. Megakaryocytes with its reduced concentration and the nucleus uh, appears to be hyper segmented with the open chromatin. Bone marrow IM appears to be increased. Biochemical parameters we can examine the biochemical parameters as serum vitamin B12 level, it appears to be decreased. Serum methyl melanic acid as well as urinary methyl melanic acid appears to be increased and we can perform the Schilling test where Schilling test is one of the vitamin B12 absorption. So in the Schilling test in the stage 1 we have seen that uh, the patient has to come overnight fasting and then the oral dose of uh, radio labeled vitamin B12 will be given in a 200 ml of water and after 2 hours this intramuscular injection of vitamin B12 unlabeled vitamin B12 will be given. So this vitamin B12 is acting as a unlabeled vitamin B12 acts as a saturating dose so that it is going to get deposited in the liver so the liver won't be free to receive the radio labeled vitamin B12 and also this um, unlabeled vitamin B12 is acting as a flushing dose so that it is promoting the kidney to excrete the radio labeled vitamin
him in B12. So after this particular uh, procedure, after two, uh, after uh, in the further 24 hours, the urine will be collected, and in the urine, radio-labeled vitamin B12 will be uh, analyzed to what concentration it will be present. If it is more than 10%, it indicates there is normal B12 absorption. If it is less than 10%, it will be abnormal. So if it is an abnormal result, we will move on to the stage two. Stage 2 are also performed by the same method as the stage 1. Uh, additionally, we have to introduce the intrinsic factors orally. So after 24 hours of doing this particular step, the 24 hour urine will be collected and uh, checked for the concentration of radio labeled vitamin B12. If it is excreting more than 10%, it indicates pernicious anemia because in this stage 2 we have introduced the intrinsic factor that indicates the patient was deficient with the intrinsic factor so that upon supplying this intrinsic factors, he is excreting uh, more than 10% of radio labeled vitamin B12. If it is again less than 10% in this stage 2 also, this, that indicates there is abnormal absorption with respect to GIT disorders and this will be resolved uh, in the stage 3. Stage 3 will be performed uh, after 7 days of oral uh, antibiotic therapy. The same procedure of uh, stage 2 will be done but see that uh, 7 days of 1 week of oral antibiotic therapy has to be followed. Specific diagnostic tests are serum antibodies to intrinsic factors can be determined. Antiparietal cells antibodies also can be determined. Histamine or pentagastrin stimulation test can be done and intrinsic factor level in the blood also can be determined. Other non-specific tests are serum gastrin uh, analysis, pepsinogen 1 assay as well as gastric biopsy also can be obtained to uh, rule out this pernicious anemia. Thank you.